Well, we're here at CPAC 2021 with Ryan Hartwig, who was uh, who worked for a contractor of Facebook doing moderation, and is been generally characterized as a Facebook whistleblower. The theme of the conference is America Uncancelled. Why are you here? Yeah, I'm, I'm here to, to support, uh, To I was here yet uh, to speak with Project Veritas. I was on stage with James O'Keefe along with other whistleblowers on uh, Friday afternoon. So it's my first time ever at CPAC. And as you mentioned, yeah, America Uncancelled, it couldn't be, there couldn't be a more fitting theme for this year's CPAC conference because we've seen just how outrageous the censorship has become with Facebook. Well, so why don't you tell me about that? I mean, you're someone who, who knows a little bit about this. Yeah. Right. So I was a content moderator uh, subcontracted by Facebook for nearly two years. So I worked in Phoenix starting in 2018. And I was a I started as a bi uh, Spanish content moderator. So I moderated uh, content in Latin America. So a lot of it was political. And also, I about halfway through, I changed and I, and I began moderating in North America. So the English content, but yeah, I saw a lot of political posts. I saw that Facebook gave exceptions to um, that, that basically, essentially, silenced conservatives and censored conservatives. Um, so uh, yeah, I film and then uh, so I started at, yeah I started moderating for Facebook in 2018. I was there about a year, and I noticed a few examples of bias. I wrote a letter to a congressman and a few senators. And then um, I didn't hear back, and so that's when I reached out to Project Veritas. I volunteered to film with a hidden camera. They sent me a camera, and uh, I, was, I filmed with a hidden camera for about nine months. Well, exactly. And so, you know, you've, there was some very, very interesting material that came out of this filming. Well, and, and tell me a little bit about that. We'll show that also while, we, while we're speaking. Yeah. yeah, so one example of, of bias that I found was uh, Don Lemon, uh, the CNN anchor, he said on air that uh, white men are terror threats. And so Facebook gave us guidance as content moderators and said, we, we know this violates our hate speech policy, but we're making a newsworthy exception. So that's one ex exception they gave for Don Lemon. But we, we always saw, saw the exceptions to people on the left and not, not the right. Another example, um, in June of 2018, during Pride Month, Facebook rolled out a new policy um, talking about Pride Month. But in that policy, they said that it's okay to attack straight white males as filth for not supporting LGBT. So I took screenshots of that and filmed that. So those are a couple of, exa of examples. Um, throughout my time there, any time that Trump was giving a speech, uh, for example, when Trump gave his State of, the, State of the Union address, Facebook told us to look for hate speech coming from his speech. Um, and another example that, that uh, stands out is in, also in the summer of 2018, there was a viral video of a Trump supporter being attacked. So there was a, a teenager in a restaurant who, who was attacked, and um, this, um, we, yeah, it was, it was viral and millions of views. Facebook told us to delete the video, and the rationale was very questionable, so they said to delete the video because uh, the adult was cursing at the minor. But obviously, you know, this, this video was, in a lot, in a lot of cases, the, the uh, cuss words were bleeped out on, on the news channels and whatnot, and so it didn't really make sense. Um, so those are a few examples. Um, there's over 30 examples of bias that I found, and I'm write, writing a book right now, which will be out in a couple months. Uh, with I'm, I, uh, it will be published with Sky through uh, Skyhorse Publishing, and it'll detail and document all the uh, exceptions um, and how the policy works, and kind of a detailed analysis of Facebook's policy. So, w would you describe yourself as being a conservative when you entered into the employ of the contractor? Um, uh, yeah, I, I've always been conservative. Um, so when I started, I, I was conservative. They, um, you know, as I talked to my coworkers, most of them knew I was conservative. Um, and, and there were some other, you know, conservatives as well. I worked with some uh, military veterans. And it was a very, uh, I guess, open environment, I mean, very uh, open workplace. We, we discussed a lot of things, a lot of questionable things. We saw, you know, very graphic videos. So you, we formed a close bond with our coworkers. And so we would talk about politics, and you know, some of us were, were left leaning, some of us, some of us were more, more, more right leaning, but we were, you know, we were doing Facebook's bidding. We were making the client happy, and so we had to follow their directives. So when they would, yeah. 
But um, like, I guess what I'm trying to get at is your 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 kind of antennae were up for this this kind of bias, right? Yeah. Ahead of time. Yeah, because I was conservative, I, I did notice bias against conservatives, um, and it was ver some of the time it was very nuanced. But um, after studying the policy for two years, I could spot little you know changes in the policy, and, and they would they could modify the policy every two weeks. But yes, being a conservative did kind of allow me to uh, put my antenna up, kind of notice these small changes, which. Okay, you, it's a small change, but if you have a thousand content moderators, you know, taking down 200 posts a day, it really starts to add up very, add up very quickly. So, you know, about a week ago, I was talking to Kevin Sorbo, who had his Facebook page uh, taken down. Now, what's really interesting, you know, when I was talking with him, is that uh, I alert, I said, oh, well, you know, Fox News has a statement from Facebook that says that uh, they, you know, alerted him that there were certain pieces of content that were unacceptable and so forth. He didn't take them down, so they took the page down. And he, he came back, he didn't even know this statement existed. Like, according to him, the, you know, Facebook had communicated with Fox News and he'd never gotten any communication about this at all, right? Now, um, this is, I, I've heard of this kind of scenario, okay, where Facebook has said, yes, we've communicated, we've told people, and, and the people come back like Kevin and just say, no, they just took it down. I had no idea. And I would have actually made changes. That's what he said, yeah. right? So do you know anything? Can you, can you speak to this at all? Do you, do you know anything about this? So uh, we didn't have any, I didn't have any direct interface with customers, with, uh, you know, Facebook users, but we, I did it. So I reviewed videos, posts, comments for Facebook and Instagram. But at, at one point I also took down groups and pages. So for example, we would get a random selection of the, of posts that were violate of, of a group and we'd go through. And if 30% of the posts were violating, then we would take down the page or group. But I didn't see on my, on my interface, I didn't see any, uh, like what notifications we are sending. So I wasn't in control of, of the sending notifications to the customer to explain why. And on my end, I would delete it for a certain reason, but I don't know if that was communicated to the, to the user. I see, okay. Well, so just this whole, tell me a little bit about this whole climate of censorship in general. Obviously, you've been going out speaking about these things, now you're writing a book, you're, you're motivated to expose censorship what what do you see happening in a broader sense yeah i mean we saw so when i was there i, I felt like from, from 2018, 2018 and before the election i felt like facebook was being a little more careful about how how open they were about censorship but now i think their gloves are off they're really they're, they've really revealed their tactics so i, I don't see it getting any better uh, we saw that, of course, you know, Trump was suspended or even banned off of Facebook and Twitter, and that's pretty bad. And, and we had the, the, the head of global affairs for Facebook, Nick Clegg, say that there was no democratic process for them to follow in the, in the United States. So, yeah, I, I see it getting worse. I think that having the other options on social media is good. You know, we, we have Gab, MeWe, Parler. So I think the free market should you know, help us, you know, um, overcome this censorship. But it's really, it is kind of frightening because you, if you have Facebook colluding with Google, colluding with Apple and Amazon, I mean, these are very, very powerful companies. And, you know, people are looking for solutions like, Okay, do we, do we reform Section 230 or do we deal with antitrust lawsuits? I think antitrust might be the way to go to break these companies up. Uh, Section 230, um, it needs to be reinterpreted by the Supreme Court. They, the Supreme Court had a chance to do that last month with a, a case by Jason Fick, but they chose not to hear that case. So I, yeah, I think antitrust might be the way to go, but uh, it, is, it is frightening when you know, political discourse is being censored and, and silenced. And that's something that uh, in 2018, Mark Zuckerberg testified that they do not censor political speech. And I presented evidence to, evidence to the contrary, and I gave that to Congressman Matt Gates. So in July of last year, uh, Gates submitted a criminal referral to the DOJ for Mark Zuckerberg. Well, Ryan Hartwig, it's uh, such a pleasure to speak with you today. Yeah, likewise. Thank you. We reached out to Facebook, but they did not respond. 